This is a Silicon Graphics Indigo workstation from the early 90s. I acquired this machine very recently and uh, it did not come with a keyboard or a mouse. So, despite uh, selling the same uh, physical port, the same physical connector as a PS2 uh, keyboard, it is actually very different and entirely incompatible. If you were to, to connect a PS2 keyboard uh, into this, this uh, port it would actually destroy the keyboard probably um, because it has very different voltage levels so since I didn't have a keyboard and mouse to go with this machine I had to do something about it which is why I created this uh, converter board you connect a PS2 keyboard and a PS2 mouse uh, in these two ports over here and it handles all the necessary uh, voltage level conversions and protocol conversions because it's a completely incompatible protocol as well and then you can plug this into the back of the silicon graphics workstation and it should just work so let me show it to you in action Now we're in the PROM monitor and it instructs us to press any key to continue, so let's see if that works. And it does. So the mouse also works and I can use it to enter the command monitor. And you can see that I can move the mouse, uh, type commands and click done. Of course there have been uh, other attempts in the past to create uh, similar uh, PS2 keyboard and mouse converters for the SGI Indigo and these old workstations. Um, specifically I found this uh, old project uh, in the Wayback Machine because the website is actually not available anymore. And uh, it, I guess it probably works. Uh, I've seen some people in uh, SGI forums um, building these converters and using them. However, I don't like a couple of things about this, uh, this, specific, this specific design. Uh, first and foremost, most important for me is that the, the firmware is not actually available in source format. It's only available as a precompiled binary. So there's no way to easily f fix uh, things or change things about it. Um, the other is that um, it actually relies on, on using two microcontrollers. Uh, one for interfacing with the keyboard and another one uh, for interfacing with the mouse which seems a bit more complicated than it has to, to be. Um, another thing I don't like about this, uh, this uh, design is that uh, it uses the MAX232 chip to interface with, um, with the workstation. And um, initially that's uh, an interesting idea. It's, uh, it, it, it definitely works, I guess. Um, but the thing is that uh, the, the MAX232, first of all, uh, it uses a charge pump to derive the plus minus voltages required for, uh, for serial communication. The problem is that, first of all, it's not strictly necessary uh, to use such a, such a chip in this uh, specific uh, case because the, the workstation actually does provide us with plus minus rails to use. So we don't have to, to use a charge pump to uh, derive the necessary voltages. The second issue is that the voltage level used, used by the workstation for communicating with keyboard and mice are actually plus minus 5 volts. While the MAX232 chip is designed to interface with RS-232 devices which are nominally spec to minus plus uh, 12 volts. And uh, it doesn't necessarily reach those levels if we see, if we see the, the data sheet of the MAX232. Um, under the electrical characteristics we can see that uh, typically uh, it goes up to plus minus 8 volts which is not that bad but it's still out of spec for what the uh, Silicon Graphics Workstation um, is designed to communicate with. So I, I don't think that uh, using such a, such, such a chip to interface with, with the SGI Workstation is going to damage it necessarily because I'm sure there is some leeway and protection in the in the SGI inputs, but uh, I'm not very comfortable in uh, going out of spec 
on a on a machine that I can't necessarily replace easily if something goes wrong, let's say. So I'd rather stick to the plus minus five volts, um, which uh, which is what the the machine is designed to to work with. The workstation communicates with the keyboard and mouse uh, using a plus five minus five volt uh, serial protocol, very similar to RS232 but lower voltage. So. What this board does is uh, it uses the, the, the plus 5 minus 5 volt rails to um, create the, the 5 volts required by the microcontroller and everything else and the keyboard and mouse, the PS2 keyboard and mouse we, we have connected to it. And it also uses a minus 5 volt uh, regulator uh, to use in voltage level, tra level translation. Signals coming from the workstation uh, going to the keyboard are clamped to plus 5 uh, volts to 0 volts to ground uh, using a diode and a pull down resistor so the signal gets inverted and fed into, into the receive pins the, the, the receive pin of the first UART of the micro, of the microcontroller the microcontroller tr talks to the to the keyboard and mouse uh, over the PS, ps2 protocol uh, by bit, bit banking the the serial protocol they use after translating uh, scan codes or mouse movement, mouse packets or whatever to the SGI format, uh, anything that it needs to send to the workstation go through this op-amp, which uh, handles uh, inverting and translating the signal, uh, the signal levels from uh, uh, 0 to 5 volts to minus 5 to 5 volts by using the voltage rails provided by those two, the, those two regulators. This is um, the, the port uh, that goes to an uh, Indigo or an Onyx but there are other silicon graphic computers which uh, use the exact same uh, protocol as the, the Indigo and uh, for instance uh, some old uh, Iris 4D uh, computers uh, use a DB9 connector which I haven't populated on my board but uh, it, it is an option for anyone who wishes to, 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 to use this converter for, uh, for an older SGI computer. And also, I found in the documentation that there are even older SGI computers which uh, use, an, um, if I remember correctly, a 15-pin uh, D-sub connector. I do not have any of these two variants to test, but I am pretty certain that uh, it, it should work because it's just a different connector. The, all the electrical and uh, signaling and all that is, is identical to the, to the Indigo. In my initial design on which this uh, first revision of the, of, the, of the converter board is based, um, I had not taken into account the fact that the AVR microcontrollers UART uses the exact opposite, the exact in, in inverse uh, of the signaling levels used in RS-232 and the, the same ones that are used by the Indigo port as well. Um, so I had to actually invert the outgoing signals uh, going to the workstation and also the incoming signal from the workstation to the microcontroller. So in order to fix that I had to hack the, the board and invert the inputs of the op-amp for, trans for, for the transmitted signals and also um, deadbug a, a transistor here to uh, invert the, the signal coming from the uh, silicon graphics workstation to the, uh, to the AVR microcontroller. However, I have uh, since uh, fixed uh, the, the design to uh, in integrate all these changes into the into the actual uh, board so these hacks are no longer necessary with the revision 2 of the of the of the converter board which is uh, available on the project website okay so let's say you want uh, one of these converters for yourself uh, what do you do first of all let me clarify because i had similar requests in the past for other projects of mine that i'm not actually selling hardware i'm not in the business of selling hardware so uh, i'm not going to be selling these in any in any shape or form boards and uh, kits or whatever uh, however all of these, uh, the hardware design is, is f free hardware design, the software is free software, and you are free to produce them, you are free to, to manufacture these boards by, for yourself, and you are free to sell them to others as well. So you may very well be able to find someone else that uh, uses this design to sell converters out there. If somebody else does that, please let me know, I could include a, a link in the project page. And uh, so if you want to make these, head over to the, to the project website. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the video description. 
and uh, you, will, you will find there uh, the full, full schematics, uh, PCB designs, Gerber files for manufacturing PCBs. You can just download, basically, just, just literally download this zip file from, uh, from the website, upload it into some uh, PCB manufacturer like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, JLC PCB or PCBWare or whatever. And you sh should be able to, uh, to have them manufacture, uh, I don't know, five or ten of these ports for uh, five dollars or something. It's going to be very cheap and easy to, to produce these boards. And then you just need to, to be able to populate them for yourself. Um, so if, if you want these files, you can just download them from the project website. I'm going to update it to include bill of materials and uh, possibly links to, uh, I don't know, sites like Mauser or whatever to, to be able to um, order the parts uh, easily. And uh, yeah, and this this is the, the GitHub repository which... Uh, Contains all the project the project uh, source files and design files as well. It's uh, released under the GPL version three, so you're free to do whatever you want with it as long as you if you make any modified versions of the of the design, uh, you should release it under the same license. Other than that, you can make them, use them, uh, produce them, sell them, <laughs> whatever you like. Thank you for watching.